Everybody okay in the back? All right, give me a wave from the back row. I can see you, even from up here. There are some things that happen in life that you just cannot explain, and the best you can do, the best word that I've found to, to describe those moments is the word somehow. When you can't explain it, you just say, somehow. Uh, like this, your body is made up of seven billion, billion, billion atoms, A-T-O-M-S. That's seven octillion atoms. Atoms are, are not alive. They are just matter. They're just uh, lifeless particles. Yet, somehow, when they all get put together and configured, they become little old, living, breathing you. It's amazing. Scientists still don't know exactly how all these atoms, lifeless, become life. And all we can say is, somehow. Or it's like this. When I was 20, I was a tall, skinny nerd. And I had a sense of humor, kind of a dad sense of humor. I've had it my whole life, even before I had kids. And I was totally oblivious, always just oblivious to any attention I might possibly get from females. And I went to work at a summer camp in college. And somehow, Bobby Joe Prawl took notice of me. And somehow, she talked to me. And somehow, when I asked for her hand in marriage, she said, yes. Somehow, and somehow, we are married 22 years, nine months, like 13 days or something like that. I don't know, something like that. Somehow. <laughs> it's a great word to describe when you can't explain something, when it's beyond reason, when um, you have no answers and it doesn't seem to make sense. The word somehow is a word really of faith. A word of hope to say, somehow. We live in a world uh, that places a high value on logic and reason. And that's not a bad thing. But we want to explain everything. And it, sometimes there's almost a sense that something cannot be true unless it is fully explained. And so we have TED Talks and TikToks that are describing and explaining um, how everything works and how you can make them work. And so, uh, we're told there are no mysteries. If uh, science or logic just has enough time, uh, enough research, enough money, we can, we can figure out all the world's problems. Or um, if you just hit the right metrics, you can build wealth. Or if you just get the right diagnosis, uh, then there's a pill for that and it'll fix it. Um, or if you just follow the right parenting strategy, then you won't mess your kids up. Uh, or even in the church, uh, this can happen. And if your pastors ever do this, just tell us, poke us. Uh, sometimes a pastor might say, if you just do these uh, spiritual steps, then God will bless you. Everything will be great. But for all of our explaining and all of our reasoning, we have to admit that there still are mysteries at the end of the day. There are still things that we can't put our finger on, things that madden us because we, we can't explain it. There still are questions. Like what if, what if you do all the research and science reaches all of its limits and there still are things that are unexplainable? Or what happens when... The medicine still can't fix whatever is ailing you and you're still suffering. What happens when you've done everything right, you've worked really hard your whole life and you're still not happy? What happens when you followed all of the parenting steps, you thought you did everything right and your kids are still struggling? What happens when you've been a good Christian and you think you've done all the right things and God still seems silent. We still have questions. 
And some women went to the grave site with lots of questions. Why did he die? Why did he have to die this way like a criminal? Um, how did a good man deserve this? Or what's going to happen next? What's going to happen to us? Are we going to die like he died? Are they going to do to us what they did to him? And what's next? And is there a next? All kinds of questions as they approached the grave of Jesus. And as they went, they had another more practical question from Mark 16.3. They said, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Uh, there was a big boulder that locked the, the cave, the grave where he was in. And how, how are we going to get that open? They were going to anoint the body with, with spices. So they came up to the gravesite. And then, then, somehow, somehow, say that word, say somehow. Somehow. The stone was rolled away and the entrance was open somehow. And then, somehow, when they looked in, there was a young man. He said this, if you'd read this with me. Do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Is there any explanation for a dead man who comes back to life again? All that you can say is... Somehow, it's the only word you've got. And then, the Gospel of Mark ends with this. Really the strangest ending of all the four Gospels. Um, this is where scholars think the Gospel ends. With verse 8, if you'd read with me. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Uh, scholars believe this is the last line of Mark's gospel. And of all the four accounts of the life of Jesus of Nazareth, this is the strangest of the endings. Uh, you would expect it to end neat and tidy, where they say, hey, Jesus is risen, they were filled with joy, and they went off and everything was great. But Mark's gospel does not end that way. It ends with trembling and bewilderment. It ends with, they said nothing to anyone, and they were afraid. And it doesn't quite seem like the right ending to the story, but I think it's perfect. Verse 8 is really important because it tells us that the Christian life is often unresolved. Uh, even with Christ risen from the dead, there are still questions. And there are still unanswered things and unexplainable things. And even as a Christian, you might say, this, this is a great day. I'm in worship, it's Easter. And you go home and trembling and bewildered, afraid. That's how Mark's gospel ends, and that's sometimes how the Christian life is. We still have questions, trembling and bewildered. You know, the, the last three months in our church have been uh, kind of trembling and bewildered. We've had a lot of tragic death in the last three months or so. It's like all kinds of tragedy, and it's just been kind of put in a short amount of time. And when we have funerals here, uh, we leave the church and we go to the cemetery for a committal service. And I always have a practice of when the hearse pulls up at the cemetery, I walk the casket from the hearse uh, to the hole in the ground. And then the pallbearers bring it and they put it on like a, well, it's like a lift uh, over the, the hole in the, in the ground. And then the family gathers around and friends and we kind of huddle by the, by the coffin for like one last moment with the body before it's buried. And this is one of the craziest things I do as a pastor and I love it. I put my hand on the coffin and then I look everybody in the eye and I say, this is not the end. God will raise this body on the last day. And then I say Jesus' words 
where he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever lives and believes in me will never die. And it's great because it's a completely irrational thing to say when you're in a field of headstones. To say, we will rise in the middle of death. But that's exactly where Christianity gives answer to the world's most mysterious question, the question of death. It's exactly in the cemetery where the answer comes. And we say, somehow I will rise. Somehow an instrument of death becomes the way to life. Somehow the Lord is risen from the dead. Somehow those who are in him will also rise. The cemetery is where somehow happens. And when there's impossibility in front of you, that's where somehow happens. There's a man in our church who in the fall was in the ICU for five days, unresponsive. And the doctors were bewildered. They didn't quite know what was going on. They did the best they could. They stabilized him. But the family, we all were expecting the worst. We didn't know, how do, you, how do you come out of this? And then, somehow, he just like woke up. And then they moved him to a regular room in the hospital. And then he went home. And later I asked him, I said, hey, did, um, did the doctors have some sort of explanation for what happened? Like, in my mind, I'm thinking there has to be like some... There has to be some medical explanation. That you have to have some treatment maybe that they gave him that they identified. And he looked at me and he said, Pastor, no. No. Somehow, God healed me. It was a miracle. And I was ashamed as a pastor that I'm looking for an explanation, a rational human understanding. And he just says, Somehow, I'm healed. You all prayed and God answered it. Somehow. We have a 14-year-old in our church who came to our church recently and her family, kind of from an unchurched background, and they came to our church and she wanted to be baptized. And I asked her, I said, "Uh, why do you want to be baptized? And in my mind, I'm thinking, um, her parents want her to do this. Is there pressure from her friends? And she looked at me and she said, I believe in Jesus as my Lord. And she wept. Tears came down her face as the water was poured over her head. And she experienced the mercy of God in a real way. Somehow, teenagers still believe, this is crazy, somehow teenagers still believe that Jesus is who he said he is. I got a text last night that right now, uh, there's a man, Jerry Khan, is watching this service from Taiwan. So, hi, Jerry. Uh, Jerry came to United States, came to St. Louis to study at a university. And in that, came into spiritual conversations where he was led to faith in Jesus Christ. And he is watching this service right now from Taiwan. And somehow... God still works in people's hearts and lives. You still may have questions. You still may be trembling with bewilderment. You have things in your life that confront you, and it's like, will this ever change? Is this ever going to be different? There are things that defy logic. You can't get around them. You say, God, I don't understand. And whenever I come against something that I don't understand, I'm reminded of of a church father from the 4th century. This is St. Augustine, who said, let me go back, I got trigger happy, who said, why wonder that you do not understand? For if you understand, it is not God. Somehow, Somehow, God so loved this world of a rebellious race that he chose to become one of them. And somehow, this instrument of death that we call a cross 
It was really an instrument of life. And somehow, a man who died and was put in a grave came out of it and is alive again. And somehow, we believe that this Jesus of Nazareth is currently the world's rightful king, the risen king, with dominion over all principalities and all powers, that his administration is in charge at this moment, somehow. And somehow, this creator of the universe, this king over all, he knows you by name. And he forgives you. And he calls you to be his child. Somehow, I don't know how, I can't explain it, but somehow, he knows you. And somehow, he chooses to use you to do his will in the world. When he wants things done, he chooses his people to do them, and he employs you. Somehow. Somehow still happens today. And some of you might be here today almost by accident. Maybe you stumbled in, maybe grandma dragged you. Watch out. Because God has a way of doing somehow in your life when you least expect it. And you maybe thought you were just doing an obligation, a duty today. And somehow, God's going to get you today. Look out. Somehow, still happens today in your life. And somehow, when this is all over, when this is all over, somehow, you will no longer have need for faith because you will see the risen Lord face to face. And it'll just be self-evident. It'll be clear. And you will hear him. You will hear his voice, no longer mediated through uh, something on a page or through the voice of a person, but you will hear his voice on your very eardrums. And he will say, Behold, I make all things new. And somehow, he will renew all of this, a new heavens and a new earth, and all of the wickedness and death and evil and sin will be gone. And somehow, it will all be made new again. Somehow, Christ is risen. And somehow, it still happens today. If you join me in prayer. Somehow, Lord, you are the risen king. Lord, keep doing somehow today. Somehow, deliver us from our burdens. Somehow, still raise the dead somehow still stay with us even when we've wandered far from you. Risen Lord, still do somehow today. Amen.